This is Film Masters, and on this episode, we are installing the hurdy gurdy wheel. We'll be also making a handle, and it's going to look like this when we've finished this tutorial. So, let's get straight into it. I'm just going to go through the parts list, what you'll need for this tutorial. So I've got a bolt, a threaded bolt, 5 16th. It's around, I've cut it to around nine and a half inches or in centimeters, uh, around uh, 24 and a half centimeters. Now um, it's going to be trimmed a little bit later on anyway, but I've cut it down to around that length. And uh, we've obviously got our hurdy-gurdy wheel, which we've created in a previous tutorial. I've also got my 5 16th threaded nuts. And uh, we've also got our 5 16th washers. These are the larger ones. And so you will need a wider washer. And we've also got the part that we've uh, created when we first was creating our side for the uh, apprehension engine. So you've got two options uh, in order to put in your hurdy-gurdy. You can use the uh, 5 16th bolt, or you can use a wooden dowel of the same thickness, um, depending on whichever one you want to use. The wooden dowel one may be a little bit quieter. Um, however, obviously it won't uh, be adjustable and it will wear itself out. So I would recommend using uh, the bolt itself like I'm doing. Um, however, if you're going to be using the wooden dowel, you can still do that. Um, it's just a matter of gluing it and I'll show you along the way or tell you how to do that. So first of all, I'm just going to put the hurdy-gurdy wheel onto our bolt. Uh, you can see there's a little bit of a wobble and that's fine because we're going to be uh, using our nuts in order to lock it in place. And we're just gonna put this little wooden stop at the end. Now, all that simply does is just make sure that the bolt doesn't uh, wobble uh, when it's in place because you don't want that shaft to be wobbling. Otherwise, what will happen is your string uh, will start to get that funny um, sound from it. So I'm just gonna let's make a measurement. I'm going to show you here. Uh, it's eight centimeters um, from the far edge. So eight centimeters, however, if we look at inches, it's around three and one quarter inches. I think that's how you say it. Um, however, you can see it on the ruler. And what we wanna do is we're going to make sure there's a little bit of a space in between because that is where another part's going to go on our soundboard. So what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, just make a mark on the hurdy-gurdy wheel where the bolt is uh, on each side, on the actual bolt or the shaft, not on the hurdy-gurdy wheel. And it's just so we can get an idea of where it's sitting so we can put our bolts on that. I'm just gonna take that out now and uh, we're going to have a look at the shaft itself and see where those marks are. And uh, there they are there. So that gives us a good indication of where the nut needs to go onto the actual shaft itself. Now we will need two of these. So first of all, I'm just going to uh, roll the first one on and then I'm gonna put the other one on and then I'll bring them both down at the same time down the shaft itself. And the reason we're using two of those nuts is because one will uh, tighten against the other and what that will happen is it will lock it in place and becomes a lock nut. And that way it doesn't uh, release itself uh, on the shaft and it, then obviously your wheel starts to get loose. We don't want that to happen. So that's what that's all about. So what happens, it locks together. And so we're obviously going to use two spanners to do that. I'm gonna use two adjustable uh, plumbers, spanners, or wrenches. Um, so we're just going to adjust it. And what you wanna do is, uh, uh, obviously there's a saying when it comes to tightening bolts, you got righty tidy or lefty loosey. So uh, let's uh, tighten it in. So uh, let's bring it together so that obviously we're turning the bolt to right clockwise. And the other one will be uh, anti-clockwise in order to uh, tighten it in, as you can see. And that's going to lock it in nice and tight and it won't move. So you won't need to put glue or any uh, thread tightener on it. And as you can see, it sits on there and stops the wheel from moving around. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get one of those large washers and we're going to place that on there. And so I'll take one of those out. Now you'll only need three of them. I've thrown four on the table for the video. I'm not too sure why. Uh, probably one to stop the wheel from rolling around, but that's fine. So we're gonna put one on there and we're going to put our hurdy-gurdy wheel on now. So what we need to do obviously is uh, we'll put a washer now. 
So as you can see, I'm using one of those to hold the wheel. So put the uh, washer on there on the other side. And then we're obviously going to get another nut and we're going to screw that on all the way down to that large washer. And then it's just a matter of uh, tightening it. So we're not going to put any Loctite or anything like that on there, which is a compound that's used to make the thread and the and the uh, nut stick together. Uh, we're actually just going to uh, use a wrench and tighten it up nice and tight. And that will stop our wheel from moving when we're actually turning it on the crank uh, in the hurdy-gurdy wheel on our apprehension engine. So there it is. It's now installed. Uh, on our shaft or our uh, 5 16 threaded uh, bolt or thread. We're going to put the hurdy-gurdy wheel shaft in now and uh, we're going to reline up with the 8 centimeter measurement. So using your ruler, uh, we're going to just make sure it's sitting right because we're going to take another measurement now. We're going to put a spacer in between. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to show you in that gap there. So you can see the hurdy-gurdy wheel is up against the side, eight centimeters. If I flip it over, that's at three and one quarter inches. And what we're going to do is measure this part here. So the thread from the bolt to the inside of your bearing. Um, so depending on how long your bearing is, uh, is going to obviously um, make your measurement different to what mine would be. So I'm going to use a marking pen and just mark the thread uh, where it is so that I can uh, get the ruler in there and make that measurement nice and accurate. So we're going to just uh, use the same material as the bearing. So this is aluminium tubing again, um, and it will sit in between like so. So I'm going to cut it to size, but first of all, I need that measurement. So I'll get that measurement from that thread. So here's my uh, ruler, and I'm just going to make a measurement. Now again, yours will be different, so uh, you can use this measurement if you want. However, it may be inaccurate, so make sure you're measuring it off your own box and your own installation. So I'm going to make that mark on my spacer, uh, which is going to be in between, obviously, that bolt and uh, the bearing on the inside. So I'm going to make that measurement. I'm going to make the cut so you won't see me cutting it. I'm just going to cut it. Keep the spacer on the other side because uh, that may come in handy a little bit later on if you need to use it. So I've cut it to size. I've deburred it, made sure it's nice and smooth and it's nice and square. And I've put that on there like so. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put a, another washer on, which is the same size as the other wash we've put on like so, and that part is going to sit up against and make sure that it's nice and smooth and it won't get caught on the other bearing. So all we need to do now is install it and that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to install our hurdy-gurdy wheel shaft in there and uh, give it a little spin. So it's sitting in there and I'm happy with it. So I'm just going to put our wooden block on the other side with a hole in it just to uh, have a look and make sure that everything is fine and it's uh, obviously got a good clearance. The next part of the build is we're going to use a spacer again. It's one centimeter long, so that's uh, half an inch in length. And uh, that's going to sit on the other side of the shaft, straight in the hole like so. And that's gonna give us a little bit of clearance for our nut when we're screwing it on. So we screw one nut up on the other side. Now we're going to uh, make sure that you need super glue because we're going to use super glue as a form of thread lock in order to lock in our, our uh, nut on the actual thread itself. So I'm just going to mark approximately uh, where I want it to sit. So I'm going to put my super glue on there. Don't put super glue on the actual uh, bearing itself or the spacer um, because uh, we want that to move freely. Now, if you're creating a wooden shaft, uh, it's an idea to glue that on there um, so that it stays in there in place. So I'm going to screw it up. So first thing to do to make sure that you've got a, a good uh, tight fit, you want to screw it all the way up not too tight. 
um, and then release it just a small amount back. So uh, there's a little bit of lean way because if you tighten it up too much, uh, what will happen is you'll find that your crank when you're trying to turn your wheel will be too tight, too stiff, and uh, you won't get that nice fluid motion on the strings. So I'm just going to uh, put super glue on the outside of the thread as well and just building that up in the corner. That will obviously tighten up and uh, it will lock our nut in place. Another thing you need to do is just check your clearance, make sure there's nothing touching uh, that bolt that's there. Um, obviously, I've got a nice size hole there. Um, make sure that you do as well, so therefore nothing catches on it. And we're just going to spin it, make sure it spins freely. And uh, obviously, you can adjust it on the other side as well. You'll need to untighten it. Um, however, I'm happy with what we've created. So obviously I've done it with uh, the nuts on there. So therefore you can go in there and loosen them up and make an adjustment if you need to. Um, but once you've got that adjustment down plates, uh, like I have, just make sure it's nice and tight. So I'm going to put that wooden block in now with the hole on the other side. I'm just going to mark where I want to put it. Make sure your uh, shaft is square with the box. Uh, you can use a ruler obviously to make the measurement and I'm just going to make a mark on the base like so. And there's a reason why I've done that because we're going to put a uh, hole in it. So what I wanna do is I'm not going to put a uh, screw on each side. I just want one right in the middle. And that is so that there's a little bit of give and so I can actually make adjustment on that wooden block itself. So I'm just gonna drill a little hole uh, through it just so I can see on the other side where that piece actually is. And obviously we're going to turn our apprehension engine box on its side. Um, and then I'm going to use a screw. So the same type of screw that I've used for the rest of the build um, and just start to tighten it through. And then what we'll do on the other side is I'll line up that wooden block to the uh, square or the rectangle that I've actually drawn on the inside of it and I'll make sure that's nice and flush and I'll hold on to it and then I'll screw it in from the other side. Now, a little cheat tip, for example, is you can hold it there, you can uh, get a drill on the other side and just drill it just to make a mark on it and that will assist you. Uh, you can put a drill hole on the bottom of that block and then line it back up again and that will help you screw it in or you can do what I'm doing now which is just screwing it straight into the timber without a hole through the bottom of that block. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, uh, leave a comment in the comment section below. Uh, as you can see, there's a little bit of give there. That's fine. I can make my adjustment by twisting it now. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to just turn the actual crank itself. You can see there's a little bit of wobble on the actual wooden block on the uh, far left-hand side. However, in the next tutorial, there is another panel put on top of that, which will lock it in, stop it from moving. But what I'm wanting to do is just make sure that the crank is not actually getting stuck on anything. And it doesn't appear to be, so I'm quite happy with that. And uh, we'll move on to the next part of the build. So before we do that, obviously, if you're using a wooden down, uh, what you need to do is see the spacer here. You're going to use a spacer on the wooden down. You'll glue your hurdy-gurdy wheel on there once you've used the same measurements as I've advised. But on the other side of the hurdy-gurdy wheel, you also put a spacer. So that's the only difference. So for example, you'll have your wooden dowel in and you'll glue it in with your wheel and you'd have your spacer on this side and then you'd have a spacer on the other side um, right here in line with this and obviously you'd use a wooden block as well. And that will actually stop it from moving around. Uh, the downside of that is once you start gluing all these in, um, obviously if you wear it down, you're going to have to actually make another hurdy-gurdy wheel unless you can drill out that spacer or the uh, the wooden down. So I'm just giving it a spin. I'm quite happy with that. We're going to move on to the next part, which is making a handle for the hurdy-gurdy wheel. So all I'm going to use, I've got a scrap piece of timber. It's nice. It's mahogany wood. Um, you can use metal if you want. I'm just going to use this instead. Um, another idea, if you've got an old wooden ruler, funny enough, you could actually cut that up and use that. So anything to use um, as part of the actual handle itself is fine. I'm just going to drill a hole at the same thickness as my 5 16th bolt, like so. And I've already done that. 
And I want to make sure that I've cut it so it's not actually going to hit the ground because obviously you don't want to uh, wear your knuckles out as you're turning it um, on the actual crank itself. So the measurements will be based entirely up to you. Now I'm going to use a wooden dowel, a thicker piece with a hole already drilled into it with a screw that will go through that. And I'll use a small washer on that as well. And obviously when I drill a hole, I'll make sure that the drill is thicker than the actual screw because I don't want the screw to tighten onto the wood. I want it to actually uh, be free floating. So when I start to turn it, it'll actually be almost like a bearing itself. So what I'll do is I'll just show you, I'll put the uh, small washer on to that actual uh, screw itself. And that will just help on the other side of the timber, obviously. And um, I'm going to drill that hole now. And here it is done. So as you can see, the hole's a lot thicker than the actual screw. And uh, the small hole is in the actual uh, handle itself. So I'll push that through. And it's just a matter of now about screwing it straight in onto the other side. So I'll use a Phillips head screwdriver for this one. And I'll tighten it. I won't tighten it until it's really tight. I want it to be a little bit loose. So that way it actually spins like so. So as I'm cranking it, obviously um, it will actually turn and it won't get stuck in my fingers. Now it's just a matter of putting a nut on. Now this is temporary. Uh, it's not going to be locked in place because there is another part we'll put in between uh, the side of the apprehension engine and our handle. Uh, but I'm going to just put it on there just to show you. I'll put the nut on the other side and I'll tighten that up. Same as before, I'll tighten it, not too tight though, just enough so it holds on to the timber at the moment. And as you can see, this is what the handle will look like. Again, you can use metal or aluminium. But at the end of this build, your apprehension engine should look like this. We now have the hurdy-gurdy wheel in there. And the next tutorial, we're actually going to be building two guitar necks. If you want to become a Film Master subby, it's pretty simple. You can subscribe to the channel. You can follow me on Facebook and or on Twitter. Until next time, don't just film it, master it.